In this video, we'll make an oblique view of the glacier we modeled in the previous video, and I'll show you how to make an image that we can drape over the terrain so our glacier is white. So let's start off here in Natural Scene Designer and just open up that grayscale DEM that we just made in Photoshop. So we'll import the grayscale DEM. Here it is, that TIFF image. We'll open it right up. It's got that elevation range stored that we used before. And so here you can see that terrain model with our glacier that's filled right in there. Let's go and take a look at it with a camera. So I'm just going to place my camera right at the tongue of the glacier and we'll look up towards it. I'll move that camera up a bit and we'll pan down so we can see the glacier from the top and I'll just render it so we can see what it looks like at a bit higher quality. So it's done a pretty good job rendering this glacier. You can see that it's sort of convex. It's a little bit taller in the middle than it is on the sides. It's this nice smooth slope that goes down towards the bottom of the glacier. You can see that the bottom of the glacier looks like it actually might be a little bit lower than we wanted it to be. There are these ridges that have built up so that the, the bottom of the glacier might actually be at a lower elevation than the land around it. This actually, sort of ironically, works pretty well because it looks like the glacier is just receding and these are moraines that have been left at the tongue of the glacier, uh, but it wasn't entirely our intent. But I think we can just sort of stick with it for the time being. So the main thing we'll look at in this video is how we can make a custom sort of land cover coloring for this. You'll see that Natural Scene Designer has automatically put sort of this rocky shading at the top of the mountain, and then it, as it gets lower it goes through this sort of soil shade, and then finally there's some trees. But it's fairly unrealistic to be coloring the glacier, especially with these browns and greens. And so we'd like to create our own custom image that we can drape over the landscape that will have some of the coloring for the glacier. So back here in Photoshop, we're going to make a couple new layers. First, we'll make a layer called Forest. And then we'll make a layer called Glacier Color. And in this Forest layer, we're basically going to fill our entire space with a color green. And then in the glacier color, we're going to use the path that we've made that goes around the glacier in order to fill that glacier area with the color white. The other thing we need to do in order to put color into this is we need to change the image mode to RGB. Right now it's just grayscale, which you can see right up here. So I'm going to go up to image and mode and RGB color. And it's going to ask whether I want to flatten the image. And what flattening does is it combines all of the layers into one layer. And we'd really like to not flatten it so that we still have the ability to turn layers on and off. So I'm going to hit Don't Flatten. So now we can add color to this image. The other thing that I suggest that we do is actually increase the resolution of the image so that it's four times greater than the resolution that we're working with right now. And this is because just from trial and error I found out that if we make an image to drape over this surface with the resolution that we're working with right now, it'll still look pretty granular, pretty pixelated at the edge of the glacier uh, where it meets the forest. And so in order to increase the resolution of this image, we just need to come up here to Image and Image Size. And then right now you can see we're working with a resolution of 72 pixels per inch. And we're just going to quadruple that. So instead of 72 pixels per inch, we're going to have 288 pixels per inch. So I'll just change that. Hit OK. It's going to take a little while to deal with this. It's just, Because the resolution is higher, this is going to be a much larger file. And then finally we can decrease the size of this much higher resolution file by taking this down from 16-bit to 8-bit. We really don't need a 16-bit spectrum on each of our three channels. We now have three channels, red, green, and blue, instead of just the single channel that we started with, which was grayscale. So I'm going to come up to Image and Mode and turn this down to 8 bits per channel. And this will make our file size substantially smaller. So now I'm going to come up to File and just Save As. And we'll save this as a Photoshop.psd file. It's going to include those layers. And that way we won't be messing with our original file that contained all of the elevation data. So now that we have this new file in an RGB color mode with 8 bits per channel, it's saved as a PSD file, and it's four times the resolution of our original file, I'm just going to get rid of some of these other layers that were describing the terrain. We're going to get rid of background. We don't need that terrain model anymore. We certainly don't need the reference map. And I don't think we need the glacier either. Remember, we still have this path here stored in our paths panel that's showing us the outline of the glacier, and that will come in handy in just a few seconds. So back here in Layers, let's first make the forest green. And to do that, all we need to do is double-click on this foreground swatch. There's the pop-up that it's giving us for a color chooser. And let's just choose a nice forest green, a sort of a desaturated green right there. And then with our foreground color selected, we can come up here to the Paint Bucket tool. Remember, it's stored in the same place as the Gradient tools, so you'll probably have to pull it up from behind. And then with the Forest layer selected, you can just dump paint into that layer, and it should fill that entire canvas with that forest color. If I zoom out here, you can see that it's just filled the entire canvas with green. 
Our next step is to fill the glacier area with white. So I'm going to come back to my Paths panel and then turn this glacier path that we've made back into a selection. I'll right click on it and say Make Selection. And then in this case, I'm actually going to feather the selection because we would like the color of the glacier to sort of fade out at the boundaries because it's going to become less snowy towards the edges. And again, this is a fairly unrealistic way of portraying this landscape. Um, I doubt that there would be a scenario where all of the area around a glacier would be green, but this is just to demonstrate that this is a glacier that we're modeling on this landscape, and most people think of glaciers as being white. So we're going to follow that pattern with our visualization. So the feather radius here, let's make that two pixels. And we're going to anti-alias it, that's fine. Click OK. And you can see here's our selection that describes the outline of that glacier. Let's go back to the layers. We're going to make sure that our glacier color layer is selected. And then we just need to make that foreground color swatch white. So I'm going to click on that and then pull the color picker all the way up into the corner here where it's white. Click OK. And now that I have the area selected and the foreground color selected as white, I can just come up to edit and say fill and then I can say use the foreground color to fill the selected area. I'll click OK and you can see it's filled in that glacier area with white. If we zoom into that area you can see that there is just a little bit of halo glow around the edge of that and that's due to the feathering that we used when we converted that path into a selection. I'm just going to go up to select and deselect so that you can better see the edge of that. And You can see that there is still a little bit of aliasing going on around the edges but it's not too bad Zooming back out here, this is the point at which you could sort of dress up this land cover image if you wanted to. If you wanted to draw longitudinal veins on the glacier to sort of mimic the way that the ice was flowing down it, you could do that. You might also want to add some texture to this forest, or maybe change the color of the forest so that it mimicked the types of vegetation at various elevations. If you wanted to use the elevation or the topography of the area as sort of a guide for helping you make some of these changes, you may want to bring that layer back in, or you could have just left it there before rather than deleting it. Uh, but there are you know, a lot of different options and you can certainly be very artistic with the way that you sort of dress up this land cover image. We're going to leave it very basic. We've just got the glacier and then the green forest behind it. And now all we need to do is save this as a JPEG image. I'll come up to file here and click save as and we'll save this as a JPEG image. And let's just call this land cover. And we'll hit save. An image quality of 8 is just fine. Click OK. And so now back in Natural Scene Designer, we can just drape that image that we just made over the terrain. So I'll close this render. Don't need to save changes to that. And then in order to drape it, I need to do two steps. First, I need to tell Natural Scene Designer where this terrain is in the world. And then when I go to import that JPEG I just made and drape it over the terrain, I can tell it where it is in the world and the two will line up with each other. So the first step I need to take here is go to Scene and then say Georeference Terrain. And I happen to know that this terrain that I have is in a UTM coordinate system and it has this WGS 1984 datum associated with it. And I'd like to enter a pixel size in the upper left coordinate in order to georeference the terrain. So I'll select that and then hit OK. I can say that it's in UTM zone 19 north or 19N. OK. And this image has a pixel size of 30 meters by 30 meters. So each pixel in this grid is 30 meters by 30 meters in size. And the upper left corner of this image has an X coordinate of 289530 and the Y coordinate of 493070, excuse me, 0770. And I found this out using ArcMap when I compiled this information in the first place. I just looked at the coordinates for each of the corners. I'll click OK. And so we've just georeferenced the terrain. Now we just need to drape that image that we just made over the terrain. So I'll come to Overlays and then say Drape Image. And I'm just going to select this landcover.jpg image. I'll open it. And it'll ask me which projection does this image have. I'm going to say UTM. It's the same as the projection of the terrain. It's using a WGS 1984 datum. And again, I'm going to enter the pixel size in the upper left coordinate. I'll click OK. It's UTM zone 19N. OK. This time the pixel size is 7.5 by 7.5 meters, and that's because we quadrupled the resolution of the image. So we have an image that's covering the same area as the terrain, but each pixel dimension is a quarter that of the originals. So I'm going to say 7.5 and 7.5 and for those pixel sizes. And then the upper left corner is the same as for the terrain. So its x coordinate is 289530, and its y coordinate is 493070. Click OK. It's going to ask me about an image border. We don't need to change anything there. I'll click OK. And then you can see that it's draped this image that we made right over our terrain.